God. Praise God. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. I welcome you to the Bread Broadcast, a Bible teaching program from Eternal Food Evangelistic Organization, a unit of Eternal Food Ministry, where we edify, we exalt, and we challenge believers to the Great Commission. Here, we also call sinners to salvation through the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us. Today, like we said last week, we are going to be finishing up on the little foxes. So today, we are going to be uh, talking about how to catch the little foxes. How to catch the little foxes. And our case study, will be Zacchaeus, that wonderful disciple, uh, from the Gospel of St. Luke. And a short reading will be the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 19. We we'll start from verse 1 to 10. Luke 19, verse 1 to 10. Let us pray. Dear Father God, through our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, hallowed be your holy name. Thank you, O Lord, for you are the God of times and seasons. You are the stability of our time. Thank you, Father, for nothing can change you. You are unchangeable. O Lord, in your steadfast love, you have brought us here again. Teach us, O Lord. Let the wisdom from above enter our hearts through your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Our foundation text is the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 13. The epistle to the church of Philippi, chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ. Hallelujah. Don't you love that? We strengthen it me. Hallelujah. You as a believer, as a child of God, you can do all things through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Like I said, last week we talked about um, the little foxes. And in my definition, I said those are sins that cannot take a believer to hell. And I thank God for a senior pastor uh, who promptly uh, called my attention. So let me say that again. By saying the little foxes are saints that cannot take a believer to hellfire, that does not mean, please listen carefully, that does not mean that there are some saints that can take a believer to hell. No. There is no biblical support for that. If you are genuinely saved, nothing can take you to hell with the Holy Spirit in your heart. No. But the Bible calls these sins, and we cannot just uh, downgrade them as behaviors. No, because the Bible says they are sins, so they are sins, okay? So those are the behaviors that comes from a natural mindset. But the Bible says they are sins. Uh, we said they are subtle in operation. That is, they operate silently. And we don't know they are there until the Holy Spirit tells us that they are there. They are salient in their production. That is, even though they operate silently in our lives, the result, the negative, bad uh, re result they give a Christian work is very evident. And we said they are settled in creation. That is, these are not things, vices that you learn. No, they are so natural to an Adamic mindset. So today, let's talk about how these little ugly duckling sins can be caught. How can we catch the little foxes? Number one, expose their impersonation. The first step in catching the little foxes 
is not to be nice to them. Do not. Because they are out to sabotage you and me. We should call the little foxes by their real names. And that's what I said. They are saints. We cannot just say their behaviors. No. The Bible says they are saints. They are saints. We should tell God, if you want to confess, don't say, uh, God, just forgive me. No. You have to be specific. Lord, I was covetous today in my office. Lord, I looked at that woman or that man lustfully. Lord, I lied. We have to be specific. We cannot expect to sing retail and then confess all sin. No, it doesn't work like that. Don't say, Lord, if I sin, really? Zacchaeus was known and addressed as rich, as rich, but he knew he was a greedy tax collector and a thief. He knew he was a thief. But people called him rich, you see. He collected beyond what he was legally commanded to collect from the people. Zacchaeus said, this is Zacchaeus now. I love that brother. He said, Lord, if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. Now, he's not saying just in case, paraventure. That's not the meaning of the if. No. He's saying, I know I've done so many ugly stuff. But among those, the people that had stolen from them deceitfully, I'm willing to return for food. That's the meaning of the if right there. Zacchaeus didn't sugarcoat anything. He did not try to excuse his old bad habits. He plainly confessed. Having come face to face with Christ. How Apostle Paul did the same thing in the book of Acts when the Lord confronted him on his way to Damascus. And he said, Lord, when they killed uh, Stephen, your witness, I was part of the madness, you see. He did not say, uh, I was once a religious fanatic. No. He said, I took part in the murder of a saint, of a believer, you see. When we act like Zacchaeus <clears throat> and mention specifically what we have done is not because we need to inform God. No. It's for us to hear how gross those seemingly harmless acts sound, lest we flippantly dismiss them as nothing. Oh no, it's, that's nothing. I was just trying to tell that police officer that I wasn't speeding. No, the Bible say, says it's a lie. You lied. I lied. We have to come out and expose that impersonation of sin. We may have to be exposing little foxes more often as we become more mature in our Christian life. Because the closer we get to Christ's pure light, the more of our sinfulness we see. I remember when I first became a child of God, I, I said, God, look, you need to fix my husband because I'm perfect. <laughs> Isn't that crazy, really? I, I can't even... I said, I'm okay. I said, I'm fine. I'm perfect. I said, it's my husband that you need to fix. And the Holy Spirit began to show me a little bit of my wonderful self. Hello? Really? Then I'm like, Lord, I'm married to a wonderful man. And I thought I was good, you see. So the more we spend with the Lord, the more of our sinfulness we see. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And God is not doing that to us to make us uh, feel depressed. No, you see now why the Holy Spirit does that. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we are 
with open face, that is now that we can see spiritually, that we are no longer blind with sin, beholding as in a glass, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the mirror, the word of God. We are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Even as by the spirit of the Lord. That is the more of the, uh, uh, of the time we spent in the word of God and in the presence of God, the more we see our sinfulness because we are coming in contact with the pure light and glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as he's showing us all that, and we are repenting of that, and he's giving us victory over those little foxes, one by one, we're becoming more like Christ Jesus. To disclose and disown is to erode the control of evil crows. Listen. Those little foxes, those saints, they are Satan's evil crows. Even worse, they are a natural evil crows. You see, we can deal with the devil, and he can leave us for a while. But we live with ourselves, you see. We live with our mindset. A mindset, a natural Adamic mindset has its own evil crows. But here is a way you can catch that. To disclose and disown is to erode the control of evil crows. Moving on. We are not only to expose their impersonation, we are to exploit their restriction. Zacchaeus did not wait until a day after the Lord had visited his house before deciding whether to give to the poor or return what he had gained by deceit. Right when the Lord was still with them, as they would say, when the issue was still hot, and in the presence of many witnesses, Zacchaeus openly permitted himself, thus making it extremely difficult to go back on his word, even if he was tempted to do so. Because we will be tempted. I'm telling you, our, our natural mindset, our inclination to sin, which is the flesh, the mind of the flesh, is worse. I'm telling you, it's worse than any kind of adversary that we have as believers. Because that mind is always with us. And we just have to constantly be pulling it away, pushing it away, and telling it to go in the name of Jesus, you see. So we will be tempted. We have to be ready for that and know that the enemy, which is the flesh, is always with us to tempt us. Our natural inclination will not die as long as we live. As this we mean, we will become perfect if they die. And that's not going to happen on this side. That is why the Bible refers to the saints who are in heaven as just men. That is, that's not talking about gender. It's talking about mankind. Just men made perfect because they have been delivered from the presence of sin, you see. However, like Zacchaeus, we can greatly hinder these little foxes in our lives by being in the presence of God all the time. That doesn't mean you're not going to go to work and you're just going to be praying. No. You can be at work. As you are going around, you are still in the presence of God. You are aware of who you are and who you are. And that will control what you do in your workplace. That is being in the presence of God. And by becoming a student of the word of God and a believer who prays for everything in every place as it was recorded of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the gospel uh, written uh, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit by Dr. Luke that the Lord Jesus, even as he was among the multitude, uh, uh, who were waiting to be baptized by John the Baptist, he was praying. He was praying under his bread. We can do the same, you see. We should hide in our hearts and recite Bible verses that specifically 
speak against these subtle sins, as well as the ones, the Bible verses that guarantee us victory over sins. We cannot lose. Please listen. With the Holy Spirit in our hearts, all we cannot lose. Guiding and leading us, we cannot lose. We cannot lose with a heart filled with the Word of God to walk us out of every temptation. No, we cannot. In the name of Jesus. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 9. Psalm 119, verse 9. How can a young man, a young woman, a young boy, or a young girl, a young family, and a grown family, how can they cleanse their way? By taking heed according to your word. Be bold to grow, lest to become old and bold. Listen. The enemy does not want you. After being saved, the enemy does not want you to grow. If you can just remain a baby Christian, you don't bother the devil. You see but refuse to stay in that position in Jesus' name. Let's start growing. Because when we grow, we keep the devil out of our towns. We keep the devil out of our streets. We keep the devil out of our schools in the name of Jesus. Be born to grow, lest you become old and fold. Don't. Moving on. Expel their resuscitation. Zacchaeus put himself on notice as well as the little foxes of greed, love of money, and lying that were in his life before he met the Lord Jesus. By acting, watch this, in exact opposite of what his natural inclination would have desired. You see. Zacchaeus made a public pledge to give half of his possessions to the poor. He wouldn't have done that in the past. This was a robber. Seriously. It, of course, he would not put guns to your head, but he was using the tax laws to steal from people. You see, now he's acting exactly opposite to that. He also promised to repay anyone from whom he could have stolen in the past. In the, in the past, Zacchaeus would be happy to steal your money, take your money, and watch you cry. He would smile. He had no problem. But now he's saying, I'm returning your money. I've had enough. That's it. I'm not doing that madness anymore. We can equally forbid the regrowth of the little foxes by acting in the exact opposite of what a natural mind would have desired. I remember one pastor saying, he, he advised a, a young man in his uh, church that um, he was having trouble with a young lady in his workplace. The young lady didn't know is the one that is lusting after this young lady. And he's a Christian. And he told this pastor that he could not wait to go to work because he would like to see this lady. And the pastor said, listen, you either look for a different way where you will not meet this lady, where you meet when you come into work, or tell your wife. And there was another pastor that actually went ahead and told the wife of that man, this is another pastor. And that saved their marriage, you see. Because when the wife got to know about it, they lustfulness flew out of the window in the life of the man, you see. So they, they, these are exact opposite. The devil wouldn't want you to expose it, but when we do and act in exact opposite, we are forbidding the regrowth, the, the reinforcement or the coming back of such ugly thing in our lives. This takes lots of practice and sometimes failing and practicing again until God gives us victory over the little fox that we may be trying to overcome. 
So don't say, oh, I, oh, I, I lied again. That's it. No, do not, do not give up. Do not. The righteous may fall seven times, the Bible says. He will rise again. You will rise again. I will rise again in the name of Jesus. We should not only uh, be practicing, we should also walk circumspectly, as the book of Ephesians says. You see, circum is from the word circumference, which is surround, surround, and spect. Of course, from the word spectacle, from, uh, from the word eyes. So we should look around, spiritually speaking, before we walk circumspectly, you see. That is, we should not go near where we can be tempted or what can tempt us. Like the example of the young man I gave the other time, make sure if that is your struggle, Tell your wife if, if, if she's a Christian or, or your husband. But if not, if you are still trusting God for, for their salvation, for the salvation of their soul, make sure you quickly tell uh, your Bible leader, your fellowship leader, or somebody you can trust. Do not keep it to yourself. If your problem is lying to the police officer when, when they pull you over for speeding, hey, there are ways to stop that madness. Leave early from where you are to your house to work, give yourself extra 30 minutes. So you won't have to speed, you see. There are things we can do to stop all that kind of stuff. We do not read anywhere that Zacchaeus went back to his shady profession. No, we do not. He probably picked up a less paying job, but with a great spiritual fulfillment. And there are so many testimonies of children of God who left um, lucrative or what you call high paying jobs to pick up less paying jobs, but with fulfilling, uh, with spiritually fulfillment, uh, that get that spiritual fulfillment rather, instead of making a lot of money and in a place where they are exposed to sin or a kind of job that, that will make them to be lying. They, they left it, you see. Ephesians 4, 28. Ephesians 4, 28. Let him that stole steal no more, you see. But rather, let him labor. If you used to shoplift, now you are a child of God, don't go to the shops when you don't have money. Or, Avoid going to places that lures you or that can lure you into shoplifting. Maybe you are addicted to jewelry or to clothes as a lady, and that is where you shoplift. Don't go there. Do not. Look for a, a sister. Tell them your shoe size, your blouse, your size of clothing, and they can buy it for you. Give them your money, and they will help you. But do not go to the shop when you are tempted to steal. Do not. But rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may give to him that needed, you see. Instead of stealing from the shops, take out of what the Lord has blessed you with, financially speaking, send to the mission to the missionaries. They need the money. Okay? Put it where that money can be used to preach the gospel. Because every soul that gets saved through that uh, ministry, where the Bible is being preached, guess what? You will also receive part of the reward when we get to heaven. Don't you like that? Huh? Instead of standing in, in, in the, at the beamer seat of, of, of Christ without the clothes you have stolen. Huh? To defy sin is to become clean. Let me say that again, because I'm preaching to me now. To defy sin is to become clean. Let's act in contrary to what our natural mindset wants us to do. If your problem is anger, do not open your mouth when things are hot. Walk away. Remove yourself from that environment in Jesus' name. How can we catch the little foxes? 
Number one, expose their impersonation. Do not sugarcoat their, their nature. Let's call them by their real names. Exploit their restriction. Be closer to God through Bible study and prayer. Expel their resuscitation. Act defiantly against our natural inclinations of sin. So, as a believer, this lesson may make the Christian race look daunting for you. That's how I felt about two weeks ago. Seriously. I was like, Lord, so it's, it's like I'm not making any progress. I was depressed, seriously. But praise God for the Holy Spirit. However, the only thing we need to be concerned with is how we can get closer to Christ every day. And when I heard that, when the Holy Spirit said that, I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord. You see. When our walk with the Lord is more intimate today than yesterday, and that doesn't mean you pray longer today than yesterday, that's good, but in obedience. Is your obedience today greater than yesterday's? You see. The Holy Spirit will do the other works of exposing, guiding, and directing us on how to deal with and disobey the natural tendencies of the little foxes in our lives. Now, if you're a pagan, you don't believe in this Jesus stuff. You are just living your life as you see it. Or on Sunday, you get dressed and you go to your church or you go to your fellowship, whatever you call it. But you know in the heart of your heart that you don't belong to Christ, that the Holy Spirit is not in you. Even though you go on Sundays to your fellowship, you're still a pagan. The problem is your paganism is worse than somebody out there prostituting, prostituting their body or stealing or robbing banks. Your paganism is worse because you are inside the pew, you see. But listen, things can still change. If the Holy Spirit is not in your life, you're a pagan. That's what the Bible says. This means your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. No. Your soul is in a definite danger of getting tortured in the lake of fire forever. Doesn't matter if you give money to your church. Oh, no. But that can change right here, right now. Because you don't know. I may be the last person you see alive. You don't know. A link is coming up. I strongly encourage and advise you to follow that link. To go see how you can commit yourself to the Lord Jesus. If all you've got is religion without reality, without commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ, you are going nowhere. But that can change right here, right now, in the name of Jesus. So follow that link and we will meet you there. Father God, Thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit, who daily strengthens us in our walk with you. Oh, dear Father God, we ask according to your word that you make abundant unto us the grace to obey you every day, the grace to run away from things can, that easily beset us. The grace to act defiantly against our natural inclination to sin. We are helpless without you, Lord. We need all the help from the Holy Throne of your mercy. Help us, Holy Spirit. Father, as for those who are going to want to know Jesus' page, Father, we pray for them. Grant them understanding. Open their eyes, O oh Lord. And Father, that they may be counted among our brothers and our sisters. 
In Jesus' name, I will pray. Amen and amen. I will see you next week. Only if the Lord Jesus has not split the sky open. Jesus died for us all so we can have life. Come to him and receive life, believe on him and thirst no more. Good News Reporting is all we do, seeing souls saved is our ministry.